I've been using Vivaldi for around three months now. It worked great for quite some time, but I have found a few things that I don't like about the browser too much. So in this video, I'm just gonna share those things with you. And I'm also going to be sharing the stuff that I don't like about this new browser, which is Brave. I know that there's a lot of people out there that love Brave and the exact same amount of people hate Brave as well. So it's 50-50. I don't know what it tell you there. Just go with what works for you. Do your research. I used Brave for a long time before this and it was okay, right? It was a good browser. I had a small issue back then and the issue is that it has like a Z index problem with transparency. I used to manage all of my different applications in a single desktop, right? So as you can tell, my terminal is transparent, but I have migrated away from transparency in the window manager in Mac OS. I did this with Yabai in the past. So now I keep my terminal in desk two in Mac OS. It is transparent using ghosties transparency. That's why you see this blur effect in the background, which I like quite a lot. So if I switch to Brave, it's in a different desktop. I don't have that issue anymore. If you want to learn more about my journey with browsers, I started with Zen. I loved it. Then I moved away from Zen, I think to Brave, or I don't remember which one it was. Then I moved to Vivaldi and this is the latest update. I'm moving away from Vivaldi. But if you want to find more, I have three videos about all of this. Go and check them out. I don't know if that Z index issue has been fixed or not. I haven't checked to be honest but it's not something that affects me. So I'm just going to mark this as done here on the right hand side because it works for me now. Technically, we could say I just found a workaround. Something that I like about Brave is that I can duplicate tabs as well. That is one of the essential things that I do on a browser. You have no idea how many times I've been in a meeting with coworkers and they need to duplicate a tab and they right click on it. They duplicate it where they open a new tab and they go to the same link. No. So I just like doing this a lot. I do it with control D. The tab is duplicated. Brave allows me to do that, which is great. So that's an extra point there. The next feature that I have here on the list is that I can copy a URL with Alt C. So just going to demo that here real quick. If I type Alt C on my keyboard, the URL was copied. So if I bring up my clipboard manager here in Mac OS, you'll be able to see it there. Let's switch to this other page, Alt C, and uh, let's bring up the clipboard. You'll be able to see it there. The only thing I don't like about this copying to the clipboard is that I don't get a visual letting me know that it has been copied. So I have to guess, was it copied or not? In Vivaldi, I didn't have this issue. So just let me switch there real quick. I'm going to do Alt C. You're going to notice that the URL shows up for a millisecond. No, like 100, 200 milliseconds, then disappears. But that lets me know that the URL has been copied to the clipboard. Let me do it again. Just pay attention to the top of the screen. I guess you saw it there. So it would be awesome if you could get that visual feedback when you copy a link. But um, I understand it must not be that easy to implement, but would be great. One of the other reasons, as you can see here, is that I can use PWAs. And I know you're going to be wondering, like, who uses PWAs in 2025? I do. Why? Because I use my computer with the keyboard a lot. So I switch between each one of the different applications that I use the most with keyboard shortcuts. For example, if I go to the terminal here, it's one key map, just two keys, right? This is Enter and uh, J. Enter J switches there. Enter K switches to my browser. I have another one for YouTube, which is Enter Y. Let me try to switch there. Let's see what happens. Hope I don't have any sensitive data there. And I don't, right? So this is a progressive web app, the one for YouTube. I have another one for WhatsApp. And I have a few other ones, like for, I don't remember which ones, but I use them a lot because I use my keyboard a lot the entire day. So here on the right hand side, you can see the first reason why I migrated away from Vivaldi. My wife sends me a lot of files. 
usually stuff that my daughter has to print on the printer, right? So she sends me the file in WhatsApp. I print it. I don't know why she sends the file directly to me because she could send directly to the printer via Wi-Fi, but whatever, right? So she sends a file. I need to download it, send it to the printer, right? The problem is that I was not able to download files on the WhatsApp, PWA, and Vivaldi. So um, I cleared cookies and cache. I don't know if it's a problem on my side. I think I tried to reinstall the PWA. Didn't work. So I just gave up. Because every time that I needed to do that, I needed to open the PWA in the browser itself. And that would work. I could download the file that way. That happened to me multiple times, even after restarting the computer, not only with my wife, but with a lot of different people. So I just got tired of it. And I said, I'm moving back to Brave because this is something that I do a lot. I need to download files from my PWAs and Vivaldi had some issue. Again, I don't know if the problem is just me or what, but if it also happens to you, I would like to know down in the comments. Just let me know. So we could say that that is the only reason why I switched back to Brave. Um, I cannot think of other reasons right now. Sometimes it would act a little weird in some websites. I don't remember which ones, but I was fine with that. I was like, okay, doesn't matter, whatever. It felt a little bit glitchy at times, specifically with some websites. I don't remember which ones, so don't trust me on that one. So overall, it was a good browser, highly customizable, but I cannot live with the PWA download issue. Now, something that I don't like about Brave, as you can see here on the right hand side, is the vertical tab sidebar. So let me switch to Brave right now. If I do control E, you're going to notice that the sidebar does not completely disappear. But now let's switch to Vivaldi. I do control E the sidebar completely disappears. That is something that I liked about the Zen browser a lot. The way that I used to manage vertical tabs is the best one so far. But um, Brave is not bad. It could be a little bit better. So if you could hide that completely, you know, the sidebar, it would be awesome, but it's fine. I don't care too much about that. I like that I can switch between my tabs quite easily. I have a custom key map for this, so it's S and H to go up, I think, and S and L to go to the next one. So just those two keys. You may be wondering how I do that. It's because I use a keyboard mapper in Mac OS, do a lot of crazy stuff there. So if you want to find out more about Canada, that is the one that I use. I have this video, I'm going to leave it in the video description so you can go and check it out as well. I searched through Brave settings and I was not able to find a setting to get rid of this down here. I don't need this new tab option there. Um, so if someone knows how to get rid of this, please let me know down in the comments as well. I would appreciate it. Like I said, went through the settings, didn't find it. So it must be hidden there somewhere or maybe it's not possible. So if someone knows, let me know. One of the other benefits I see in Brave is the ad blocking that it already includes. And this is counterproductive because I do YouTube. So if you guys watch my videos without ads, that impacts me directly. But hey, we just got to be transparent, right? There is a pretty interesting video that Nico Loves Linux uh, posted three months ago. I watched it. So if you want to get a different perspective on Brave, if you don't trust the browser too much, Go and check this out and maybe that will help you in your decision as well. And one final thing that I wanted to show you, notice that I'm going to be typing some text here, typing some text, example text. Notice the cursor, sample text again, text here again, one more word. Notice that I'm just going to bring up the terminal toggle on the right hand side. And notice that the cursor has this animation. It's pretty cool. Let me switch to a different file to my dot files here. And if I go up here in the file, you're going to notice that the cursor animates quite well. Just going to bring up the terminal here, hide it, 
If I bring up a NeoVim plugin, it shows that. Let me bring it again or the command line. So I have a video about this. I released it a few days ago. Where is it? Ghosty cursor. It's the one shown here. So it's new animations that have been released for Ghosty. If you want to go and check it out, quite good to be honest. So I think I covered everything in this video, all of the things that I wanted to share with you guys. If I left something out, if you have any other tips, tricks, let me know down in the comments as well. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like content about NeoVim, Mac OS, and all that stuff. And if you want to support me to keep the channel going, you can consider becoming a member. I'm also going to leave the link in the video description. Just want to say thanks to each one of the YouTube members and the people that have donated in coffee. I'm going to leave those links as well in the video description. We're talking browsers here. So you're probably a Linux guy or an advanced user. So if you want to check out the interview that I did with uh, DistroTube a few months ago, I don't remember how long that was. Go and check the video that is going to show up here. And on the other hand, if you're into keyboards, I recently released a video on why I'm using just 40 out of the 80 keys in my glove 80. Go and check this video down here. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.